Hello and welcome to week 11 of Sound Design for New Media. Today we're going to be talking about a few concepts that uh, have emerged in the last couple of decades that tell you how uh, people interact and uh, ultimately get involved in uh, video games in particular, but other types of media as well. Uh, we're going to start with a couple of, of uh, maybe simpler concepts and then we will move into immersion. So the first concept to think about is that of presence. Presence started uh, appearing in, in, um, in, in literature in the early 90s. That's the first time that uh, virtual reality systems became uh, sort of feasible. So you will see this uh, uh, this concept appearing very in in very early implementations of telepresence. She was something that an operator would be uh, conducting a task through a virtual environment, which would seem very clunky uh, compared to what we have now. But they would be able to perform this task by using a computer. So some of the studies that were conducted at that point were focused on how much the operator would think that they were not in the room where they are, but in the virtual environment. So it's that sense of being there and there means in that virtual environment. Um, this last uh, definition is, is uh, quite useful, which is uh, the extent to which a person's cognitive and perceptual systems are tricked into believing they are somewhere other than their physical location. So you are so in 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 a very heightened sense of presence in which uh, you are completely involved in the system that you're in, you are no longer physically where you are actually are, but in that virtual environment. And there are some studies that tell you that that presence is not really a your present or not, but there's a sort of continuum that that um, that exists. And uh, generally, the greater the presence, the better that users are at um, um, accomplishing the tasks that were set out to do. The other, and uh, Sam was talking about this in a tutorial. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, but that the, the concept of flow, which is that uh, state in which you're so involved in an activity that everything so else sort of disappears. So usually it's an enjoyable experience. And uh, again, I like this uh, last definition in which this, it's the state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. Uh, so it, that experience is so enjoyable that other things that are not so enjoyable, uh, and hence the great cost definition here. Uh, so people are so involved in something that they stop doing something else. And you have heard this from uh, gamers that get so involved in a task that they stop eating or or uh, or uh, go to the toilet and that kind of thing. So again, it's it's it um, it's something like. It's that all of these concepts are related, and we're going to be um, seeing that immersion is also a little bit related to all of this. But the concept of flow has to do a lot, not so much with the environment that you're in, but with the task that you're performing. Uh, presence is a lot that uh, it has to do with the environment. Flow has to do a lot more with the task. And then we get to that concept of immersion. Um, I like this definition a lot uh, from this book, uh, but um, the, the concept of immersion as defined here is that diminishing of critical distance to what is shown and increasing the emotional involvement in what is happening. So it tells you that there's something that is, uh, what, what you're being presented is so involving that uh, you uh, kind of forget where you're at and you're in, uh, completely immersed in the experience that you're having. Tied to that and something important to video games is that of realism, which doesn't mean that what you're experiencing is, ex experiencing is, is something that is just like real life. 
it's something where believability or very similitude uh, is 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 uh, very high, so that you stop questioning if it's real or not. Uh, this created of or uh, env environment is so it, everything works together so well that you are uh, you think it's 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 real. So it's it's very similar. It's believable. And so those those four concepts that of present flow realism t and immersion are are important. They are all they all seem to uh, uh, merge a little bit between each other. But I think making some uh, distinctions between them is very uh, it it can lead to better results when you're designing something. So immersion doesn't deal solely with um, with video games. Immersion is something that has been happening for a long time, and uh, there's uh, talks of immersion from visual experiences to oral experiences to uh, even reading experiences, something like uh, that, that uh, you can be immersed in a book, even if, if uh, there's n not so much of your senses that are being kind of like overwhelmed, which is the typical use of immersion, the, the term immersion these days. Um, a little bit of history of immersion. Uh, you can see some uh, uh, early examples for example, in uh, Bill, uh, the Villa de Misteri in Pompeii, where there were these rooms that were completely covered in paintings, and um, some of the the the, the theories that uh, that have been examining these rooms, it it is um, it, it is thought that that was the that the immersion was the purpose of these rooms where someone would come in and be so uh, visually surrounded and, and uh, overwhelmed to a point that you're completely immersed in that experience. You're transported from the world that you're in and get immersed into that world. There's other examples a little bit later uh, in medieval times, like the Champ du Cerf in uh, the Palace de Pape in Avignon, where it's a very similar experience where everything uh, is uh, all the, the visual experience is kind of overwhelming and the the, the, the uh, visitor is transported to a different world and obviously uh, a few years later you start seeing things like uh, things uh, massive paintings in in churches where uh, again it's it's designed to 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 completely immerse the the uh, viewer uh, things like perspective to give you a a sense of of uh, greater space than what in the, than in in which you really are. Uh, something that happened in the that was popular in the nineteenth and early twentieth century that is that of a panorama, where there would be a, a building and in that building a fairly photorealistic painting would be painted in a in a circular environment. So again, you're completely surrounded with this, by this panorama. Um, the uh, perspective characteristics are very well preserved, so that the user thinks uh, they're they're in somewhere else. There's actually one of those um, somewhere in the Blue Mountains. If you're interested in in, in seeing a panorama, uh, it's it's cool. It's cool. It's a cool experience. Uh, I think that's the only one that I can uh, that I that I could discover in New South Wales. So it's pretty close, Blue Mountains. Um, if we move on to moving image, uh, you can think of of the first few movies that existed, um, and uh, how people completely believed that uh, the a train arriving at a station was really going to come out of the screen, something that they had never seen before. So even if it was a very small screen to what we're uh, used to these days, there is there was that sense of immersion that, that uh, and, and realism that, that people thought that a train was going to um, come, come at them. Um, Screens are obviously have they have been getting bigger and bigger, and some 
there's there's been a few examples of trying to achieve that complete uh, overwhelming of your senses from the first few sort of IMAX theaters that existed. Now IMAX exist. Uh, the sensorama where you would stick your head and, and be completely surrounded by the, the viewing experience. And even things like the view master where you're only uh, seeing uh, the, the uh, 3D images within that, that um, uh, device. Very simple, but pretty cool. Um, so immersion visually has, ha has existed for, for quite a while. Uh, if we think about sound, sound there has also, there's also um, evidence that, that immersion in sound has existed for a while. Uh, if you look at the cave drawings uh, it, it, in, uh, in France, you will find that the cave drawings are generally in places where uh, strong resonances for singing voices can be found. So it is very likely that the people that painted these this, um, this, um, uh, cave drawings uh, decided the places based on a uh, surrounding oral experience from chanting. If you start looking at uh, man-made built structures to to um, enhance um, the oral experience, you start looking at things like the Greek amphitheaters. There was really good intelligibility in these theaters, uh, just based on the geometry and the distance to the to the listener. But there is not a lot of reverberation. If you start looking at how they start building theaters in the Roman period, you start seeing walls and um, uh, different curvatures, which will in in turn create great, greater reverberation. So intelligibility would probably be uh, a little bit worse, but that sense of being surrounded by sound starts appearing in these structures. Um, and again, going back to churches, uh, in, in at the later at later dates, you start thinking about how uh, these these uh, buildings were um, conducive to that sense of being surrounded by sound. And uh, in in from from the Renaissance and onwards, you start looking at places that are that are being built to. Um, to specifically for playing music, and why do you why would you have something like this as opposed to just being out in the open? Um, to an, ex uh, an, an an important reason is that it will amplify the instruments in in space. Another important reason is that it is keeping out um, sound from outside. But another uh, byproduct of this is that uh, there is a sense of and the word that is typically used in concert halls is envelopment, which is that sense of being surrounded by sound, um, which a lot uh, that 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 uh, that term um, envelopment and the current use of immersion when talking about sound are very 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 similar, which is that concept of just being surrounded by by sound. You you look you see a lot of, uh, of um, uh, products and marketing that uses the term immersive when referring to sound, when it just means surround sound with a lot of loudspeakers, which is isn't strictly speaking what we would think of. Um, if you if you think about the the definitions the stricter definitions of the sense of immersion, which is that of of uh, a little bit of suspension of disbelief, uh, or or being completely um, completely uh, being completely absorbed by what you're listening to, uh, as opposed to just being surrounded by sound. So how do we achieve immersion in games and in general, really, in 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 media? Uh, there is that. There are different factors, and this is from the reading uh, for, for this week. 
So if we're uh, to achieve immersion, there are a few things that that allow you to do that. There's a few reasons going from that uh, multisensory experience, what we were talking about when being uh, kind of overwhelmed visually or orally um, in, in a sense, but it, it is not necessarily necessary. Um, you can be uh, completely immersed by a book and which leads to the other one of the other uh, reasons in which we can be immersed, which is that of the narrative. Uh, if we are really liking a story, there is a sense of immersion that can be achieved. And the other one is that of uh, facing strategic and or tactical challenge, which is uh, purely uh, ludic or game uh, related. Uh, reason in which we are, by which we can achieve immersion, and then there are two aspects of immersion that we can think about uh, why immersion works. One is that psychological state, uh, mentally you're completely immersed. But the other one is thinking about how technology helps you to achieve that, whether that is by putting a lot of paintings around you or putting a VR headset or uh, being completely surrounded by sound and uh, how that is a separate um, uh, avenue to achieve immersion. And that is, in the end, the goal that we want to achieve. So think about these kind of things and these kind of terms when you are uh, designing sound for something that you want to be immersive. So hopefully that uh, helps you a little bit in uh, providing a, a um, framework for your research into your design uh, task. That is the, the, the last assignment.